Hello, it's Shari here today, and I'm going to be making these place card holders. They're pumpkin pie slices for your Thanksgiving table. So I'm going to use the cake slice box die, and I'm going to use the pie add-on. So I'm going to get out the two main pieces that make the cake slice box. And I'm going to cut those from some baked tan cardstock. So I'm just going to hold those in place and run it through my die cut machine. Now I'm going to be making my own sort of pattern paper, but you could also cut these out of an orange pattern paper. I'm going to go ahead and cut the top of my pie slice out of some craft card stock. And then I'm going to cut the back pieces of the pie slice from some paper bag card stock. And I'm going to be doing some inking on these pieces later. So to create my pattern, I'm going to use the gingham backdrops and the pumpkin spice ink. I've got it put in my misty here. I'm going to speed things up so you can see the whole process. I'm going to do some masking with some post-it note tape and a post-it note so that I only get the gingham on the sides of my cake slice box. And I'm lining it up with the grid in a little bit from where that gingham stamp is so that it'll stamp off and it'll look like a patterned paper. Now it didn't stamp great at that seam where that tape is so I'm just making sure that I go in and put some pressure right along that seam that's right there. And I'm going to be stamping each side twice so I get a nice dark impression with the ink. So now I can peel that off and you can see that my gingham is only on the sides that are going to be seen. This also keeps you from stamping the gingham on the side you've already stamped, which I did the first time, so don't make the same mistake I did. Um, and then you get double stamped. And this also allows you to line it up in the direction instead of stamping the whole piece where one side would be one direction and one side would be another. This lets you line it up with the edge of the box. So now that I've done that to the top of the box, I'm going to do the same thing to the sides, or I should say the bottom, not the sides. <laughs> They're all the sides. So I'm using the same piece of tape, I'm just lining it up with that score line that the die puts there for you. And again, I'm just going to line it up with the grid. The tape actually helps hold the piece in the misty, which is kind of nice, in addition to the magnet. And again, I'm going to ink up that gingham backdrop and just stamp it down. Make sure I have nice pressure along that seam where the tape is. And I'm going to double stamp all the stamping on this piece as well so everything matches. And now to do the final side. It doesn't matter if that stamping gets on those little flaps that are going to be hidden when you add the adhesive and you build the box. But it does keep you from messing up the gingham on the other side. So you can see I pulled off that extra piece of tape on that side and covered up the gingham I'd already stamped so that I don't mess up the part I'd already stamped. This would also be fun out of an orange plaid or a pattern paper that was a tone on tone. So now to do a little inking, I cut the top of the pie out of the craft, which is a little bit lighter, and I'm going in with some dough ink and just adding some definition to the edges and darkening it up just a little bit. I thought that inking these pieces would give it a little more interest than just using the solid browns. It kind of looks like it's been baked. The edges and the center are a little more brown. I'm going to do the same thing to the back piece that goes on the lid and the back piece that goes on the base. And I'm just inking that with the walnut ink since this is a darker cardstock. That walnut ink shows up better than the dough would. On the, and the scallop piece, you need to ink both sides because you're going to see the top edge 
on one side and then you're going to see both edges on the back side. This is going to go like this so you really only need to ink the bottom edge of this square panel that goes on the back of the bottom part of the box. All right, now to assemble the box, you just fold along all those score lines and make sure your creases are nice and sharp. So I'm using the Teflon bone folder here just to make sure those are all nice and sharp, especially because this is cardstock instead of pattern paper, so it's a little bit thicker. So you wanna make sure all those folds are well folded. I'm gonna go ahead and glue the top of this on there while it's still flat. You can see since I didn't stamp the top, just that orange is gonna show through those little cuts in the top of the pie. For a nice clean look. So now I can start to add my double-sided adhesive tape to all the little tabs that are going to make this box. So I put an extra long piece here and I can just trim it off. Or you can see here on these little pieces, I'm just cutting small pieces and just putting them on each little tab. But be sure to cut off the excess so that it's not exposed when you finally fold your box together. Once you have adhesive on all those little tabs, you can just pull off the backer paper. And I like to go ahead and pull it all off all of them at the same time. And then you can quickly assemble the lid of the box. So I like to do the point first and get that nice and tidy. And then tuck these little five little tabs underneath sort of around the curve. And then I just make sure that last tab is tucked under there. And that is the top of the box. So I'm going to go ahead and glue the scallop detail piece that comes in the pie add-on to the back. So you can see you didn't need to stamp that if you were doing the stamping, but there's no need to mask it off either because it's going to get covered up. So I'm using liquid glue so I can kind of move this around and make sure my scallops are lined up. I'm just going to hold it till that glue kind of sets slightly and then it'll be nice and secure and it won't pop off. You could also use an adhesive tape runner as well. So there is the top of my box. Now I can do the same steps to assemble the bottom of the box. So I'm going to make sure all of these folds are nice and sharp. I also think it would be kind of cute, which I did not think about it till after I had assembled the box. Since you have this solid color piece of cardstock that doesn't have a pattern on it inside, it would be kind of cute to stamp a sentiment in the bottom of the box. So when you open it, you take out whatever treats you've put inside. There's a little sentiment in the bottom. It says Happy Thanksgiving or whatever it is you want it to say. So I put that other brown piece on the back side of the box. It's just a little easier to put that one on when it's flat. The other one you cannot put on when it's flat. You do have to have the lid assembled before you put that scallop piece on just because of those little tabs that go around the curve. You can't really assemble it very well with those if that brown piece is already on there. But for the bottom, you can go ahead and glue that rectangular piece to the back. I've got adhesive on all those little tabs just like before. I'm going to pull off all that backer paper and start to assemble the bottom of my box. So I'm just lining it up with the curve and then make sure that last little tab is tucked in. And I just like to push down and make sure all those are nice and stuck down. And here is the little pie slice box. So now we can keep decorating it by, I've cut out the um, whipped cream that comes with the pie add-on and then the little circle comes with the original cake slice box. 
I've cut those out of white, and then I've cut a stitched wavy banner out of some vellum. And this is where I'm going to put the name of the guest, which I'm going to use my own name. And I'm going to use this alphabet set here. But that banner fits right in the slit that is cut in the whipped cream perfectly. I decided to go with vellum because I thought a solid kind of took away from the whipped cream. And through the vellum you can see it. So that's just a personal choice, but you could use any kind of paper you wanted for your little banner if you don't have the vellum. And I'm going to white emboss the name on the vellum. So I'm just taking each of the letters and sort of lining them up with the curve. Because this is curved, you can't just line them up on the block like normal. But you could also do straight banners if that's what you have in your stash. So I'm just making sure it's kind of more justified to the right so that the left end of this little banner can slide into that whipped cream and then the name will show on the other side. So I'm going to use my anti-static tool, put some of that powder down on there. I'm going to use some clear ink and then some white embossing powder. I'm just double checking that they're stuck down. And I always like to have my embossing powder open and ready before I stamp. I'm gonna knock off all that excess. And then I'm going to use my heat tool to heat up that white embossing powder and make that nice bright white name on this banner. I did have some stray embossing powder and on vellum you can easily just take a craft knife and kind of clean up those letters a little bit. Now to assemble my whipped cream, you're going to take these little pieces on the bottom and you're going to fold one in one direction and you're going to fold one in the other direction. And this is going to create the base for the whipped cream. Now that circular piece it has a slit cut into it and that's just going to slide over these two pieces so that it looks like it has a full circle base. Now you can just glue those two little flaps to the bottom side of that scallop circle. And this will make it stand up straight and vertical on the top of the piece of pie. I'm going to go ahead and slide that banner in and you could just leave it like this if you want. Um, you'll see here in just a little bit I am going to add a glue dot to the back to hold it in place. But if you didn't want it to be so permanent to where it could be slid out and taken away easily, you don't have to do that. It will stay in there pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and add some glue to the bottom and stick that to the top of my piece of pie. I want to stick it towards the back so that I don't lose the detail of those little cuts on the pie. So I'm just picking up a glue dot with my craft knife and I'm just going to slide that between the back of the whipped cream and the vellum banner and this will just secure it in place if you don't want it to be able to be slid out easily. You tuck a few treats in there and it's a nice little gift for your guests. Once I got the box together, I decided I wanted to kind of define the edge of the scallop a little more so the two pieces looked a little more separate. So I'm just going in with some fake tan ink and just lightly inking the edge of that scallop just to define that edge a little bit more from the bottom piece.
And now my little pumpkin pie Thanksgiving place card is complete. You can see how that kind of defines that edge a little bit more so it doesn't all look like one piece of gingham. Here's another look. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.